Hi everybody and welcome back to video number 10 um, on chapter 17. And when we left off, we were looking at an example of percentage of completion method cost to cost basis involving the hard hat construction company. <coughs> and here is our contract price, right? And the cost to date here were a million dollars. So the estimated cost to complete was $3 million. The estimated total cost would be $4 million. And so the estimated gross profit was $500,000. So at this point, we're 25% complete. Now in 2026, the contract price has not changed. We've incurred costs of $2,916,000, and we estimate that it's going to be a little more expensive than we originally thought, with estimated costs to complete of $1,134,000. That takes our estimated total cost from $4 million to $4,050,000, and trims our gross profit down to $450,000. And at this point, we are 72% complete based on the 2916000 divided by our estimated total cost to complete. Here. So now in 2027, um, our cost to complete were unchanged at $4,050,000 and our estimated total costs were $4,050,000. So we come through with 450,000 of gross profit and the contract is 100% complete at that point in time. So how do we record that in a journal entry? Here initially construction and progress a million dollars and our costs of $1 million for material cash payables, etc. And we'll record progress billing by debiting accounts receivable and credit billings on construction in progress. And then to record collections, we will debit cash and credit accounts receivable for $750,000. Now in 2026, our construction in progress is 1,916,000. And we will record progress billings of, of $2.4 million. And we'll record collections of $1,750,000. And then finally, in 2027, we'll record construction in progress of $1,134,000. We'll record progress billings of one million two hundred thousand and finally to record a collections of two million dollars okay so our percentage of completion revenue cost and gross profit by year will look like this so here's our revenues gross profits and we'll recognize that $125,000 in gross profit in 2025. Then our gross profit in 2026 will record the $324,000 of gross profit, but we had previously recorded this $125,000 of gross profit. So in this quarter, we'll have that difference recorded at $199,000. And finally, in 2027, we will record uh, $4.5 million in revenues. Um, our costs in total were $4,050,000. Our gross profit was $450,000. But we had recorded in the prior year um, uh, $324,000 of gross profit. So we back that out 
and record another 126,000 in gross profit in the 2027 year. So I think you can follow that arithmetic pretty straightforward there, I think. All right. Now, the journal entries to record revenue and gross profit and to record the contract completion on a percentage of completion basis, cost to cost. Here, we're going to recognize revenue and gross profit, $125,000. The construction expenses were a million. So the revenue from long-term contracts, $1,000,000. $125,000. Now, in 2026, our construction in progress becomes the $199,000, construction expenses of $1,916,000, for a total revenue of $2,115,000. And finally, in 2027, our construction in progress gross profit, $126,000, our construction expenses, $1,134,000, and revenue from long-term contracts, $1,260,000. And to record completion of the contract, finally, we'll debit billings on construction in progress and credit construction in progress. Okay. And... <clears throat> our construction costs, our recognized gross profit in 2025, same thing for 2026 and 2027, for a grand total of $4.5 million. And then when we close the project, um, we'll, we'll close the project for $4.5 million. And on the financial statement presentation, the computation of the unbilled contract price at the, at the end of 2025, we're going to have 25% completion or unbilled revenue of $225,000. So I think that covers pretty much how we would do that and here, the construction, hard hat construction company income statement in 2025 will reflect those same numbers. And on the balance sheet, we'll have accounts receivable of 150,000, representing 900,000 less 750,000. And our construction in progress will be 1.125,000 ,000 and billings of 900,000. So that's going to represent costs and unrecognized profit in excess or billings of two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. In 2026, same idea here, the gross profit we went through previously, our accounts receivable is going to, is going to be one hundred and fifty thousand plus two point four million dollars minus one million. $750,000 here for $800,000. Our billings will be $3.3 .3 million and our construction in progress um, billings in excess of cost and recognized profit will be $3.24 million and we'll recognize profit of $60,000 here. And finally, in 2027, we'll pick up another 126,000 of gross profit. Okay, note disclosures. Here, under our summary of significant accounting policies, we're gonna tell the world what we did with long-term construction contracts. Here, the company's recognizing revenues and reports profit from long-term construction contracts in its principal business under the percentage of completion method of accounting. These contracts generally extend for periods in excess of one year. The amount of revenues or profits recognized each year are based on the ratio of the costs incurred to the total estimated costs. 
Costs included in construction and pro process include direct material, direct labor, and project-related overhead. Corporate G&A are charged to periods as incurred and are not allocated to construction contracts. Okay, let's apply the cost recovery method for long-term contracts. Here, using the cost recovery or zero profit method, the companies recognize revenue and gross profit only at the point of sale. That is, when the contract is completed, okay, under this method, companies accumulate costs of long-term contracts in pro progress or process, but they make no interim charges or credits to the income statement accounts for revenues, costs, or gross profit. All right. So here is an example of this, and I think it's pretty obvious what they've done here. Here's our revenues, our costs, our gross profit. Revenues, costs incurred, cost, and gross profit. And finally, at the end of the progress here, we have $4.5 million less $4,050,000, or a gross profit of $450,000. So this is a little bit different, as you see by this example, how we get to our final $450,000 in the current year and what we've recognized here in prior years. Okay, cost recovery method, revenue. And the journal entries are, I guess, a little bit easier in this sense in that we show our construction expenses here and revenue from long-term contracts here. And then finally in 2027, we reflect the gross profit of 450,000 additional construction in, in, in pro progress expenses and uh, revenue from long-term contracts. And lastly, to record the completion of the contract, we will debit billings on construction and process and credit construction in process. Okay, so if we look at the differences between these two on the percentage of completion method, we're recognizing um, a profit, I should say, as, as we complete the project. Whereas on the cost recovery, we don't reflect it until the very end in 2027. Okay, financial statement presentation is as you would expect it to be. Here, zero uh, gross profit, 2026, zero gross profit, and finally, 450,000 profit. And on the balance sheet, um, for 2025, we're going to show um, our $100,000 cost in excess of billing, accounts receivable of $150,000. So that's going to total, um, and then, then our current liabilities would include the billing and the construction, construction in process. And then all we'll do in 2026 is add the 800,000 for accounts receivable and the 384,000 for billing in excess of cost and recognized profits. And then in 2027, we have the 450,000 of gross profit. And they, and they indicate the summary of significant accounting policies by basically outlining what the cost recovery method means, and I won't go through that. You can read that on your own. Okay, that looks like a good place for us to stop this video, and when we return, we'll look at identifying the proper accounting for losses on long-term contracts. Until that time, bye for now.